So here are the Washington Redskins picks. Again, they were starting at 10. They had Blaine Gabbert right there if they wanted him. Blaine Gabbert fell to him. Instead of taking him, they moved out of that spot down six spots, let the Jaguars take Gabbert. They took Ryan Kerrigan. Then they had Jarvis Jenkins and Leonard Hankerson last night as they went ahead and got a wide receiver that a lot of people think they need. Another defensive tackle. Everybody believes Albert Hainsworth is gone. If he's not, that would be a major shocker. Then today, a string of Nebraska players. Helu Gomes and Paul, three straight Cornhuskers for him. And then Evan Royster, another running back in the Shanahan system, followed by another playmaker, they hope, from SMU, Aldrich Robert Robinson. However, Jason Lockett for and Michael Lombardi still no quarterback. Redskins. So the question is with the Redskins, what do you think their draft strategy is here? Well, for a change, they went quantity and they <laughs> traded back and they've got holes all over the place. But right now they don't have a quarterback and they don't have an offensive line. I mean, John Beck is it. Yes, McNabb's under contract, but we all know he's going to go elsewhere. I know last year I heard some rumblings that they actually like Mark Bulger a little bit, and I'm not sure he's a system fit in that he's not very mobile. He's not going to be able to – you can't boot him out and do things like you would have with a Cutler. I mean, I would imagine they look at some veteran free agent, and again, in terms of their roster right now, it's John Beck. Right, but they traded for John Beck, which tells you they like John Beck. Now, whatever's happened in John Beck's career since he's been a second-round pick of the Miami Dolphins hasn't been real positive, but the Redskins saw enough in him to make a trade. So that tells you they like him and they want to work with him. And Mike Shanahan, having been with them, really truly believes he can develop a quarterback and take him to the next level. And oftentimes, a John Beck's the perfect kind of guy for him because nobody expects him to be very good. But I do. I think they're trying to replenish all those years of not having a lot of draft picks. And when you run out of draft picks and you don't sign a lot of college free agents and they don't make your team you're a couple drafts behind and I think ultimately guys Mike you know you don't understand it as best as anybody you don't have enough draft picks it's tough to fill out your roster and the Redskins haven't had them so that's why I think all these draft picks will certainly help them get better as they try to improve the team yeah certainly a shift Michael in the core philosophy of the Washington Redskins and and I believe a needed shift and what I find interesting in the picks as you go down the list forget who's gonna throw the football there's a significant change who might catch the football. Aldrich Robinson from SMU is an exciting accelerator. You want to talk about a kid that can get from 0 to 60 in no time at all. Is he raw? Yeah. Kick, catch the football. He's got speed. They also got in the uh, earlier rounds Hankerson and Niles Paul. So you've got two big-bodied receivers coupled with a vertical take the lid off the top guy. So kind of interesting. Two running backs, three wide receivers. I haven't seen an offensive lineman yet, which to me is more of a surprise than the quarterback. And that addresses the wide receiver misses that they had in recent drafts because yep. we're going back now to the young man out of Michigan State, Devin Thomas. We're going back to the young man out of, out of Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. We, we killed both oh, those yeah, guys no, both a couple those guys years ago. Hurt his knee, so he yeah. doesn't make it. So now they've got to replace that. And here we go, go with a couple of guys. And I really like Aldrick Robinson coming Malcolm out of SMU. Kelly, you were talking yes, about exactly. out of Oklahoma. Kelly had, yeah. the, had the knee injury. So I really like Robinson. I think he's exactly what you said he is, an accelerator. And remember, Manuel Sanders came out of there last year. June Jones knows yeah. how to coach wide receivers. I tell you, Kerrigan might have been one of the more dominant players in our league as a defensive end. You had to know where he was at all times. They moved him around. So they did a good job. That, that nope. one player can make them very good in a <laughs> short amount count of time. For him, Brad, I'm you? curious as to your take on this, because I watched a ton of his tape, and I love the kid, but I thought he was a 4-3 base end. They're going to ask him to stand up and play in the 3-4. Yeah, I, I can't say on that behalf. I know there are a few plays where he would just you know, oh, pop yeah, up no on, on fourth down or third down. Right. But I tell you what I loved about him is even when they had some uh, setbacks this year as a team, he came out every game and played his tail off. I mean, a lot of times guys in this situation begin to hear from outside voices, hey, you know, you're playing well, make sure you protect yourself, you know, put yourself in a position to be there right. at the end of the year. But he just got stronger as the game wore on. Every game he get, was in there 100%. And you know what he did was you talk about game-changing statistics. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a big stats guy all the time, but when you talk about forced fumbles and sacks, they're game-changing statistics, and that's what this kid had. Well, and a lot of kids are just going to go in and make the play, but if he knew the quarterback was blind and didn't have no awareness, he was stripping that ball every yeah. time. And some guys just, you know, make the play stand up and start going around. He yeah. changed the game. So we what exactly did you say to your offensive coordinator? Well, when, we, you, when you, we popped on the tape, did you walk in Coach Chris's office and say, okay, how are we going to count for him? I didn't have to tell Coach Chris. <laughs> <laughs> every player on that film knew where Ryan Kerrigan was. Uh, so as we look at the uh, Redskins pieces of the puzzles, last year they're starting uh, linebackers, as you can see. London Fletcher's not going anywhere, neither is a Rackbow. 
but uh, one must assume that Ryan Kerrigan and uh, uh, Mr. Blades, who was a backup from last year, that's going to be your starting projected linebackers there. And we, we could keep going on and on about all this stuff, but we keep talking about it's a quarterback-driven league, right? That's what we keep talking about. We do. We keep talking about it. if you think your guy's there, you got to go take him. Clearly, it wasn't Gabbert in their mind. They must have kicked the tires on him yep. and figured that he's not our guy. Who's their guy? I mean, would they really? John Beckett in the, NF, in the NFC East, would they go with John Beck? Would they go with Rex Grossman? Is the Washington Redskins starting quarterback not on their roster right now? I don't think he's on their roster. I mean, I, I think when you're a team like Arizona or Washington with a declared need for the quarterback position, yet you haven't drafted a quarterback, it tells you something. And what it tells you is we feel confident as an organization that our owner is going to spend the money to go out and get the quarterback we need. And Rick, Richie, listen to this song. Huh? Are you kidding me? Let's, let's, take, let's bring it back. back. Hey, Ricky. Hey, it's bringing it back. Look at See, you. Look at now, I, now I know. Now you, I know. Did you not know when he heard Run DMC? I was about over. to say, when Mike Mayock goes night at the Roxy, I know that you know, we, we, we've been on the air too long. But uh, you don't think that, uh, you know, they're going to call up uh, the Eagles and they'll be, didn't we trade you a franchise quarterback last year? Are you calling us Give again? Give it a Kevin shot. Cobb? I mean, could they be look, thinking about uh, other players who are on other teams' rosters right now? Again, the, the, the Arizona Cardinals, too. I, Kyle, I know we keep Kyle saying they're going to go. is a possibility. There are other teams. You know, we keep throwing around Carson Palmer and Kevin Cobb, but there are other Mark quarterbacks Bulger. that are going to shake loose out there besides the obvious yeah, ones. Yeah, Cobb, you got Bolger, just, just, just off the top of our head. We're talking about Orton being in play out there in, in how about the loser? How about the loser in Cleveland between Seneca Wallace and Jake DeLone? DeLone. So they're going to be some, quote, functional quarterbacks. And I'm not trying to tell you that they're going to win Super Bowls, but what they will do is bridge the gap between a young team that's drafting all these players and somewhere down the road in the next two or three years when you find that franchise quarterback. Michael, Jason? I think of those names, again, I'll mention Mark Bolger because, I, again, I did hear a buzz last year that he was someone they were considering as they were looking for options because clearly they had a quarterback need last year as well, and they made the move for McNabb, and it, it didn't work. They're going to need numbers at the quarterback position regardless, Mike, because if you look at the state of that offensive line right now, particularly guards, centers, they, they probably need at least a guard, probably a center, and a tackle. Yeah, well, the Redskins, you're not going to get that fixed in one draft. Right. You know, that's what happens to a lot of teams. Everybody wants your team needs to get fixed immediately, and you just can't handle them all in every draft. you got to take the best players that you see available, and then there's some areas you're going to have to try to find, whether it's steal somebody off of somebody's practice squad. The Redskins, they were not a very talented team last year at all, and there's a lot of areas they've got to improve upon. And certainly the quarterback is the biggest issue. But I think Mike, knowing Mike as well as I do, he really thinks he can fix that problem. Well, he has in the past. <laughs> we'll see, Rich. All right. Thanks very much. That's uh, that's the thoughts on the Washington Redskins situation right there. I, I believe we had just had another kicker taken. We did. And it was the one that was referenced in the text <laughs> message I got, Matt Boxer. <laughs> see, now you're not now, now you're, into it. Now you're into it. Can we bring Russell Erksleben back, please? A first-round guy. My freshman year at Boston College.